One of the really fascinating contrasts with modern archery and traditional historical archery is the bow grip and it's actually the source of a lot of debate and confusion. Um, people will watch archers of different techniques and they expect to see one particular thing so when they see the other they think it's wrong so uh, we got a lot of people who see uh, people holding these modern target bows with a very loose grip and they'll say at the limp wrist you've got to hold it tighter you need more control and then you see people shooting these traditional bows and they see a really big death grip and they say no it's way too tight you've got to relax and both a loose grip and a tight grip are correct for the purposes they use for. So we're going to examine how grips will differ between shooting styles and why both can work. Now understanding the correct bow grip is essential because it is one of two physical contact points between the archer and the bow. One being the bow grip the other being the release hand. So no matter what technique or style you use, these two points are going to be where the majority of errors come from. So any variation or uh, incorrect application of a release or the bow grip will contribute to undesirable results. But again, what is the correct grip and why should you use it? The guiding principle is less tension means more consistency and what this means is when you are holding a bow with a lot of tension or a lot of strength or power a very strong grip you're going to induce more variables between each shot as each bow grip and each shot will differ uh, each time and that also means too that you'll become increased fatigue and there are opposing forces acting on the bow. The last thing you want to do is to fight against your own bow. This is not too dissimilar to modern firearms. And since many people are familiar with the use of firearms like rifles or pistols, um, you will perhaps understand this difference a lot better. Now, most people, again, will think of firearms in a very practical way, um, where you're taught to grip the handgun or the rifle in a particular way, especially to control recoil, because you expect there to be a recoil and you need to keep the uh, weapon on target. Uh, with small ball rifles or air rifles, which are mostly used for sport shooting, there is virtually no recoil, which means you don't need to brace yourself in terms of posture and grip to control recoil when you don't expect any recoil to happen. So the focuses for both a full caliber firearm compared to a small caliber or air rifle is going to be much different. And that's why you, you see people shooting, um, sport shooting rather, uh, with air rifles or uh, pistols, shoot with somewhat strange stances, leaning backwards, hands in pocket, um, pointing with a limp wrist, because they're trying to reduce the fatigue by not being tense. And this is opposed to someone who might be shooting for a combat role or uh, law enforcement, for example, where they need to move around, where they need to uh, retain the weapon to control it and so on. And the similar principles will apply to archery, both modern sport shooting and historical you know, combat shooting. Because these purposes are so different, let's approach this from both perspectives. So modern bow, modern me, let's talk through this. So we have a typical modern target sport style bow. Uh, it, it's what you might call an Olympic bow, but there's no sight to stabilizers. So it's functionally a bear bow. And it's like any bow. It's bigger, heavier, more purple, but it functions like a traditional bow. Why is this held differently? The purpose of modern target shooting is precision over distance, which means any variation in your grip and any other part of the technique will cause inconsistency on target. That's unavoidable. So while you can hold a bow by clasping it around the um, front of the bow or curling your fingers around or two or one, which is how you use these bows when you don't have to sling, when you do have a sling, you don't really need to grip it at all. The bow is retained by not having the fingers 
on the grip at all. It's actually all based on the pressure point on the base of the thumb. So the grips are designed to be ergonomic. So when you put your hand or the base of the thumb on the grip, that's the pressure point. It sits there. When you pull the string back, that pressure point will take all the weight of the bow at full draw. There's actually no grip at all. Now, of course, if I let this go, it's going to come flying forward, which is a good thing for technique. And of course, I'm using a sling, I'm using stabilizer rods, it'll drop, it'll swing forward. Optimal release because there's nothing acting against the bow. Even the slightest amount of curling on the bow, such as pushing on the side of the riser, putting it around, will naturally get me to start gripping it. So a lot of people will say, oh, why don't you grip the bow? Why don't you catch it? Anything you do that will change your grip during or just before the shot will affect the shot. That is why modern target archers will have a, a grip which puts pressure on that pressure point that allows it to sit in place without being held. Um, traditional shooters who don't shoot style of archery but use similar bows without slings will do similar things but again they'll just keep a relaxed grip not the whole hand usually usually just the front part and they'll retain it lightly. Again works just as well not as 100% consistent compared to no grip but it is still what they do. It's a light grip for most modern and western archery because it is emphasizing consistency over control. So how about uh, historical or traditional archery using these kinds of bows? Um, the grips are generally much stronger. Uh, the actual strength will vary between which style of archery you're doing, so Korean archery, Japanese archery, uh, Ming Chinese archery, Turkish, will be slightly different in what they emphasize. But it is generally more of a strong grip compared to a Western or modern grip. Now, one example of this is that with uh, Arabic archery or Turkish archery, it is said that when you grip the bow with your hand, if you pour water over your hand, then the grip underneath the fingers should be dry. That's how strong the grip should be. And there are reasons for this. One reason is, of course, power and control. You're not dropping the bow, you're not letting it go. You need to have both sides working together to execute the shot. And that's why the emphasis on the front grip is much more pronounced than a modern target archer. After all, this is used for uh, military purposes, for hunting, for survival. So be able to deliver powerful shots with the front hand is much more emphasized and important. While target shooting, you don't need to punch with a lot of power, usually using a lot of bows. So, con so consistency is more important than physical control. Of course, this style of archery because a lot more physicality, more rotation of the upper body, more upper body movement, that sort of thing with more martial compared to recreational or sport. A side reason too, by the way, is a lot of people mentioned that um, the traditional bow drop is also present. Um, that's called khatra, which is used in many styles, not all, but many. And that's also activated by a strong grip, particularly the squeezing of the bottom fingers, which on the shot will cause the bow to twist forward. That is also a technique, which will cover in more detail in a different video perhaps. But generally speaking, traditional grips are much stronger and tighter with more control compared to a modern relaxed grip. But you have to remember that these purposes are very different. This is a very versatile grip which allows you to shoot target, shoot flight for distance, uh, shoot short distance, shoot powerful bows, shoot light bows. The modern target grips which are very relaxed are optimized for scoring points on the target. So hopefully that explains um, how tight the grip should be um, and especially more so for the people who are used to seeing one way more than the other. We get a lot of sniping back and forth between different styles, especially people who assume that one method is wrong when you don't contextualize what they are doing. Anyway, hope that helps. Thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time.